This time on Etch Epics, yeah, new name, uh, we have Tim Godoic, a design lead at Airbnb, one of my favorite products and uh, one that's totally respected across the industry. I wanted to ask Tim about design sprints. It's something that he uses within his team, uh, but also what's it like going from agency to products and can he be creative within the kind of constraints of a design system? Awesome, awesome guy, and uh, hopefully you'll get some great insight as to how Airbnb works. So today on the uh, podcast, I've got Tim Kodoic. He is a design lead at Airbnb, one of my favorite apps. And uh, Tim, hello, how are you doing? Hey, Ross. Good to see you. I'm, I'm doing great. It's awesome. like a sunny Wednesday here in San Francisco. Yeah, uh, and I'm I'm in a room that's um, like a listing in Rio, so it feels like I'm not even in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, um, and yeah, it, here it's it's dark. It's eleven o'clock at night, but you know that's <laughs> just the time difference. Um, so, Tin, I I talked to you on Twitter initially, and I re we talked about. Um, well, what first attracted me to your Twitter profile <laughs> professionally is you were talking about how you use design sprints. And it's something that I'm learning and using uh, day in, day out. Um, you, you even say you're an ambassador of it. And maybe we could just start by understanding how you first got uh, started with design sprints, how, how you learned to use it. And, um, and what have you found through, through using that methodology? Mm -hmm. So I, I mean, um, a couple of years ago, it was even before GV was like very public with like the the whole website and like the the book Jake's book and everything. Um, they were sharing like just a couple of articles um, around like creating this process that they want to use for all the like portfolio companies. Um, there were like glimpses of something that I felt was like really interesting as a process. Um, and, you know, to be frank, I wanted to start using this process to, like, kick off projects. So, like, you know, working in an agency, in consultancy, it's like it's a completely new relationship. It's a new product that sometimes exists, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's like a, it's a new version, or like a big refresh. Yeah. Um, and I was thinking, like, how might I use this to solve for a couple of things? So first was, like, spend the week with like the most valuable like stakeholders in the company and like basically kind of a forcing function to get the right people in the same room mm -hmm. which for me is like half of success almost yeah. um it's an excuse to actually um explore different directions and um you know prototype and validate obviously but just kind of gives us leeway so early on to like be really wild with, with ideas um Third thing, since like, again, from an agency perspective, you got to constantly be selling your work and be proving how you're um, bringing value to this business. So what we did when, you know, we wanted to have like six months or 12 month engagements, we actually started with a design sprint to show that we are, you know, industry experts, that we can give so much value in what people perceive as like a five day. Obviously, it's like you know, what I call pre-production and post-production sure. um, in this process. So it's usually, you know, at least like three weeks, usually closer to a month uh, of end-to-end -end work. Um, and then, I mean, what I've seen is like, I mean, I've had like a great team every single time that I went to a sprint, but we were just able to like show the impact really quickly and also like to get future work. Because um, then we would go into like a three to six month project with like a very you know, extrapolate a design phase where like it's the, you know, the, the strategy and like the IA and UX and UI, and, mm. like all of those like parts that you, you know, we all traditionally know, but this was just like so powerful because, you know, we met the VPs the first day, we kind of aligned on the goals. Um, we created a lot of artifacts and um, um, different directions and prototypes and just kind of bringing users in. It's also just within five days, you can um, basically teach the client so many things. Because like some of some of those uh, organizations just don't do like regular user testing, you know. Yeah. So like this is this is not of 
you know, a full on user testing, like even within one day, they see something is like, you know, people start noticing it's like, oh, our users are coming into the office. Like, what is that all about? Right. Mm -hmm. So there's like all these like trickle effects that, that, that happen because of those five days. Um, that, yeah, I, I mean, I, I've just, you know, become a believer through actually practicing it and like seeing the benefits. Um, again, for the agency, for the business, for the user, it's not like, you know, one is benefiting more. It's almost like a win, win, win situation. Yeah. And, and do you find the, after the design sprint, the momentum, uh, of, of the continued work is, is at a faster pace? I mean, you, you've, you've compressed multiple emails. I mean, you've, you've got rid of email completely because mm -hmm. you've made all those decisions together. You've got buy-in from, from the, the rest of the team. And do you find when you go into the, the kind of the, the project after the sprint, do you, do you still feel the pace or, or do you kind of consider, oh, that, that happened in the sprint, now we have to kind of think deeper or spend longer? I mean, is there quite a stark transition between the two? Mm -hmm. um, so I think in my experience, it depends um, based on the project and how like the sprint was even defined and what the purpose of the sprint was. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you validate directions, but there's still a lot of like, you know, strategy design that needs to happen before we can you know create flows and really understand um yeah because the design the sprint product it, it's it's quick and dirty isn't it i mean we don't have time mm -hmm. to spend uh doing this or doing research or it, it is very much decide and you've got to carry on and i guess after that period mm -hmm. you're able to revisit or you you found something in testing and you say well let's go and spend a bit more time on that i guess it enables mm -hmm. you to focus and give you a bit more time understanding the the real needs from the project yeah i i often saw like design sprints as almost a great exercise to get to a first like brief or like uh you know a product like an early product spec of what the goals and problems are and like what we want to explore mm. um what we usually did like again, from from like an agency standpoint, was um, kind of the sprint ended. So we heard what we heard from users. We like um, put a layer of our like, oh, these are like the industry recommendations that we you know we as like a design agency can provide. We think this is best um, um, of a like product fit. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously we you know shoot that back to the client, and then kind of it's it's a combination of the client, us, and like the user before we go into the next steps. But it's at least there's like alignment and maybe like even clear trade-offs. Um, but you're totally right. Like the, the last day of validation, it, you're not trying to like validate the directions. You're trying to learn so that you can go into like a, um, a design phase that's going to set you up for success yeah. um, and not really kind of go in like, you know, weird circles where you're just like trying to find what the product is. Mm. Um, because a lot of those times, like the product doesn't really exist. What I think you asked about momentum. I think one of the biggest things here is like trust is building trust, which you can send like hundreds of hundreds of emails and we are all on Slack and like there's emojis and everything, <laughs> but <laughs> like building that emojis. trust. Yeah. So that like, you know, who you're talking with and what they're like thinking process even is um and how like best to collaborate um especially when you have teams in like four cities three time zones um you know engineering on both the client um and agency side so it's it's yeah i, I think like building the trust is like so powerful mm. and all like when i was like a younger designer i kind of didn't really understand the the, the the power of it or like even the the value um and you know as you do like more and more, more projects and then you just can like compare you know because yeah. we humans are really great on comparing that's why that's how we like most easily get anything it's like oh like why was this relationship better you know and then you try to like unpackage it it's like oh because you started it with like you know being together for like five days and mm. all of our you know clients were great because like whenever we were like we were in their hometown you know it was never um 
most of the time it wasn't where like the most of the team was so like they would like take us out so like you have this bonding component um you know that is super crucial as well and then you're basically like you've done everything that you could to set this up for success and then it's just like a lot of smart people caring about the right things and then it's like much easier definitely uh and that's that's when you were agency side and now you're at airbnb in san francisco um so what's it like going from from agency to to product i mean you you work with many many products and then you have one to focus on what mm-hmm. what's it like um i often think of airbnb as this amazing like our campus right as this amazing village where there's like dozens of startups so like 50 startups are in this small town that basically do not compete with each other but like collaborate Mm -hmm. and you know at least from my side so i'm on the host side you know we have this vision of like a host-led world right or like kids grow up and they say you know you know what like i want to grow up to be a host so obviously like teams have specific goals metrics projects whatever but it's really like startups collaborating with each other and trying to you know help up level this entire town that we live in um so for me i know that a lot of you know th- th- there's there's this notion of like oh in agency you're like it's it's really fast paced or constantly changing clients projects like verticals whatever but airbnb is so rich with opportunities um so I don't know if you've seen the kind of the February launch that we have. So Airbnb for everyone where, you know, we announced like plus and, and, and beyond and a lot of other interesting stuff. So like yeah. there are small teams that are like big teams here. There are like um, very old, old teams that are very like, you know, developed and have a lot of people that are like, you know, project startups that are like spring up. My close, close teammate just like went to start a new team just like two days ago. <laughs> And it's, you know, our version of like zero to one. Um, and it's kind of some of the, some of the same principles because like there's headcount. You got to inspire people that could join your team, either externally or internally. Same thing, right? You got to inspire people to join your team. You got to tell them about like the, the mission and vision and the potential of your team. Um, you have some sort, sort of budget. You have approval from, you know, whatever, like e staff or whoever. So like there's, it's, it's really modeled by what we found outside of like a company like Airbnb. It's it's what exists in in, in our industry. Yeah. Um. So for me, that's you know, and um, I I love Airbnb f- for one specific reason because I feel like you can really make an impact wherever mm-hmm. and whenever and however, and it's just a matter of like finding that opportunity, finding the right um processes methodology people whatever and then just like running with it um you know it's it's um our ceo brian shared this a while ago and it was like one of the one of the small moments that really like made the decision for me to join it was like you know i never told you that like the you know the walls need to be white you know just because like we've painted them white it's like go go change whatever you need to change in order to like make, make this the best company in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's what makes it, you know, I'm like even getting like goosebumps now. Cause like, that's what makes it really inspiring. Mm. Um, and it's, and it's really, you know, one of our core values is the um, being an entrepreneur. And like, that's what our founders, you know, have shown with their, like <laughs> with their work, you know, 10 years ago and it's, what we want to instill in every single person so it's like you know you shouldn't ask for permission you should like find what's most impactful um for airbnb's mission and vision and just like try to do it try to achieve it in the best way definitely man i i know i've followed airbnb for a number of years now i remember when the bellow came in and you know i saw a video of of brian kind of working through it and um explaining what it meant and what it represented uh i i've used the platform myself um and i know that as a company 
you all value design and and at many many levels and i i think that really runs through um quite clearly when the announcements came out um i was looking at um uh, because there's a work option and airbnb plus looked mm -hmm. awesome i was thinking wouldn't it be great to uh run a design sprint from an airbnb house or something and 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 just you know hire in a, a private chef and and not just deliver value within the design sprint but have a great time as well in a really nice location mm -hmm. um so <laughs> I, I it's it's something that i appreciate what i'm also drawn to is the absolute consistency through everything um after the the kind of rebrand everything works everything like you say with with the white walls <laughs> in in the mm -hmm. the houses themselves everything feels like it's I use the analogy of a art gallery. You've got white walls and the art is out. And I feel like I get that experience through through um, working through the site. Uh, experiences have come through as well. How do you ensure you've got this consistency? And is it quite hard to solve kind of product development problems? Or, or have you got an amazing, robust process? I mean, you know... I, are, are projects months or do you get to the get-go so quickly that actually everything is an experiment? What what kind of thing does that look like? Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's, you know, for, for smaller like design teams and companies, it might feel like, oh, it's impossible for us to like do a um, any kind of design system. And it's like so much like we need to like hire someone specific for this and it's so much overhead that it's, it's going to like um, slow us down rather than speed us up. So at Airbnb, I mean, this is obviously having like a dedicated team and, and um, Kari is like, you know, basically kind of the, in my mind, the leader of that team, you know, internally and externally and, 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 and I love working with him and, and it's, and it's allowing us, it's enabling us to like move quicker to be more consistent, obviously, I mean, th those things that you said, like, come out of the box, but like really to move quicker to like, um, test things quicker, you know, like, what is, what is wireframing look like when you have a design system, you know, when it's like, um, there was the, the time lapse that I think John Gold shared on Twitter where like, he, you know, he shows like building one or two or like three screens, um, with the design language system. And, um, it's like it's like so easy it's so fast and it's like you don't have to figure out even when i'm like thinking about like early sketches it's it's better to like jump directly in in and like use the actual dls components um because things things like screens and flows start feeling really um right really quickly um you can get people excited really quickly like cross-functional partners like when you build something it's also i mean easily expandable and it's constantly like it's a living thing um you do need dedicated people i mean that's i mean you do need like a dedicated team to like support that mm -hmm. uh but as you as you reach like you know a team that has like whatever like more than 100 designers imagine I couldn't imagine a world where we didn't have DLS. I couldn't, I, I don't know what that would look like. You know, it's like this, this feels as, as, as much as part of our process as like, you know, having, um, having any kind of this other design tool that you might use. So like you start with like, you know, a pen like this and maybe we like wireframe on like whiteboards and, and paper. Uh, but then as we quickly want to create things that feel real then we jump into the ls um but it's also it, it helps i mean it's it's not a design only process it's like end to end you know mm. it's it's what engineers use and reference it what helps um new designers like on board and understand how to keep that consistency um it's really trying to constantly like challenge it and see where oh, this is something that my team needs that like the DLS doesn't support versus something that's, oh, my team can make this and it's going to benefit the entire platform. And it's going to like, everyone can like reuse or repurpose this component or thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, and and like, I, don't, I feel like we're so 
like we're evolving the DLS also like really quickly, um, just based on like the needs and based on, um, you know, like what does it mean to have a DLS for China as a specific market, right? Yeah. You know, does you mentioned Plus? You know, does Plus need their own DLS? Is it like a flavor? So there's like you know, as the system evolves, as like basically as the organization evolves, and then the system needs to like follow it. Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff that that's happening. But I, I don't know. I I love the fact that we have that, and also I couldn't imagine working without it yeah. anymore. Like, um, it's even how I'm, you know approaching when I'm like sketching something at home and like start to think about like the basic atoms and molecules of anything now. So I feel like it's regardless of like how, and again, like design tools, like, you know, sketch and Figma, they're basically the way they're designed, you know, through this component thinking, they're kind of enabling and, and facilitating like hopefully, you know, removing the friction out of having like a design system. Yeah, yeah. Um, so now, even if it's like one page, even if you're doing like a landing page, um, like having some sort of like small DLS is going to help every single designer, I think. For for sure, and and for anyone that doesn't know much about the um, Airbnb uh, design language system, um, there there are kind of pages and articles. I think Google highlighted um, part of uh, the experience as well. Uh, I remember Tim, um, it, it might have been a, a year or two ago, but there was a uh, a tool that um, someone internally at Airbnb made where you could see instantly um, the experience on different devices and in different languages. And that, mm-hmm. that was just mind-blowing to me because we, we have, to, to achieve that on just devices, you have to have a bank of devices and all the way from mobile, tablet and desktop. Um, but th- this was like a tool someone had made and you could say, oh, how does this look like in, in China? Like you say, how does this look like in uh, London? How does this look like in uh, Tokyo? It was incredible. And just that devotion to helping everyone make the best by creating the tools to enable that I, says a lot about the design culture within Airbnb, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm like personally really inspired by kind of our leadership and like, you know, Alex basically built out this team from, you know, just a couple of people. I mean, it's even hard to imagine that just a couple of years ago, it was like, oh, there was like 10 people for all of design and content and research. That's kind of, you know, that sounds again, like a little bit crazy, but like we're a fast growing business. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the emphasis on quality um, and that is like tied to, you know, the way we have like almost like a, you know, a, a ship list, making sure that we check all the right boxes before um, anything goes into like experiment or, or like live to the public and is really putting the emphasis on, um, accessibility and then localization and then um, left to right and right to left languages um, and then understanding like the the guest and host journeys even when you think about just that moment of like uh, different personas and user types like the system really needs to evolve um, and adapt to like uh, provide the successful experience Um, but yeah I think it's you know most of the product team is obviously you know here in San Francisco so it's it's really important to have this as like almost design teams you know guiding principles it's like we really need to be um, overthinking how the app might work in um, emerging markets when it's just like mobile only but like the speeds are not really comparable to what we have yeah. um, you know in London or San Francisco um, and then when you really think think about it in that way, you're basically like zooming in on a particular use case, but the whole point that it's going to benefit everyone, mm. you know, because when I go to Big Sur, reception is really bad. So I'm basically going to benefit from the, you know, the async loading and skeleton frames and whatever's happening there. Although I'm still like, you know, by default, um, this, you know, white and privileged guy living in San Francisco, right? So it's, I, I, I don't know, I see like we have so much initiatives across Airbnb to like ensure quality from every single standpoint. Mm. Um, 
and it's hard but i'm i don't know i'm again like i said i'm like really inspired by the people that i'm surrounded by so that yeah. kind of makes it easy what what is it like to be a designer in, in san francisco i mean you're you're not originally from there what what was it like getting used to to going to work and and being around these these amazing talented people yeah um I mean, the recruiting process for like Airbnb and most of these companies is really strict. So like by the time anyone gets like through the door, I mean, they're like, just they're just amazing people. You know, when I like actually, you know, think about who I'm working with and then look at their like LinkedIn portfolios and Twitter bios and whatever, I'm like, oh my God, this is, so it's, it's, <laughs> it's really easy because, um, it's impressive team members yeah. and I think one of my um, content strategies colleague, she um, Amy Gurka, she published um, an article on Airbnb design, um, and it's this thing that I've been using as a hashtag, although it's not, but it's like uh, growth over glamour, because mm-hmm. um, she came from like the agency world, like I did, and here my like main um, like personal focus is really like growth, right? And that's enabled by you know the smart people that you surround yourself by and it's obviously not just um, design it's like every single um, role here and obviously like having a you know dedicated data scientist team I'm just like you know in awe having a dedicated research team yeah you know before Airbnb I was like doing all of the research for the agency and conducting and like you know facilitating and like recruiting and like but um, having having people around you that are like focused on that makes it you're basically setting them up for success it's i think the same kind of thing like with the um uh, dls yes so once you have like specific people that are focused on that once you have a team Mm -hmm. um once you get the right people in the right place and you just give them like inspiration they're just going to create that vision and like execute it yeah um so for me, you know, I mean, like moving from New York to California, um, I mean, California is in so many ways closer to Croatia than New York is. And maybe that's just by the sheer fact of how, you know, New York and London are like, yeah. you know, skewed on like the scale yeah. um, of everything. They're like amazing cities, but they're like really specific. Um, so like day to day life feels even closer to what i had you know like running my own studio in croatia yeah. <laughs> which is maybe sounds surprising but it really is the case you know the um the weather here is nice i like bike to work every single day it's like a 10 minute bike ride yeah. and i just uh come in like really excited every single day and just like oh like this is me i'm still here you know so <laughs> I'm, I'm 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 very lucky and like the um, it didn't take me long to adapt. I think I, you know, asked my like manager on like day two while I was still in the onboarding phase, like, can we do a small project, please? I just want to, you know, <laughs> get my hands dirty um, as soon as possible. Yeah. Um, um, so yeah, that's that was awesome. Uh, so uh, look, I know you you're you're way busy and you, you've you've taken you know some some time to to answer my endearing questions what what's getting you excited at, at the moment i mean there, there were the recent google announcements um i i i love to kind of i wanted to get you on because i i enjoy the the airbnb experience what what are you seeing um that that's getting you excited and um who, who do you think other than where you are is is doing well in design today um yeah i was like looking a little bit of like the keynotes uh in the morning the IO keynote so i saw some glimpses and obviously like the the things that were like trending on twitter the material um, design still, stuff yeah the material design stuff there's 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 a couple of things that i found really interesting and exciting um i really love when like hardware and software and like behavioral science like overlap um seemingly um I think like the the AirPods and the fact that like once you take one out, it actually pauses whatever you're listening to. Yeah. In my mind, it's just like you know, 
UX award of 2017, you know, the best experience hands down because it's, it's honing into what we as humans do naturally. So it's not, we're not, you know, it's the, 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 the platform is not educating us to learn a new behavior. And I think Google did something similar yesterday with like Android and the shush um, uh, feature where you like, you put your phone down and it just like puts it on whatever, do not disturb mode. And it, again, it's like the behaviors that we have um, and it's just kind of honing, honing down. And then I, I think I'm in this room until four and I think someone is no worries. We can kicking, finish up dude. Uh, um, uh, kicking well, me out. Yeah. Yeah. So, no worries. Um, Love goes on. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Um, and then, like you said, I think like Google and like the, the, what they're doing with like Google maps and trying to like bring it from utility to like also this exploration mode. So like obviously going, you know, turf or like Foursquare, Yelp, and just kind of making sure you use the Google map even before you actually think you need it. Yeah. Um, so that's, I mean, that's, that's really exciting. Awesome, man. We, we've moved to another room. Uh, obviously, life moves pretty <laughs> fast at Airbnb. <laughs> yeah. Um, so with, with the host experience itself, it reminds me of um, how Uber uh, focus on the driver experience and the user experience mm -hmm. of of the the people using the app um have you found uh unique things about hosts you know do do they have different needs to to other people or, or, or people like yourself are, are they more i i just need to get people through the door or, or have you found other things that that you're like wow that's that's really interesting and i didn't know that about that side of the experience yeah i i think so obviously I was like really inspired to like join the host team specifically. I mean, um, Brian says this a lot and I think it's true for a lot of other companies, their product might be hardware or software or whatever. I mean, for us, our product, and, and I mean this in the best possible way, are our host. Without the hosts, like Airbnb doesn't exist. No. So that's like, that's kind of the DNA. Um, so really making sure that like, we understand the hosts, we, we're um, successfully helping them be the best possible hosts, the best possible entrepreneurs. I mean, we have hosts on the platform that might have a single listing, uh, which is what you would imagine, like with what most people think of is like, I have a spare room or maybe like an extra um, a loft that I'm um, listing on Airbnb. But the scale is, and, and it's true, like you have hosts on Airbnb that have like 300 listings. Um, we have been 300. bringing on. I didn't know yeah, that much. Wow. <laughs> we have been bringing on like, you know, boutique homes and, you know, we have a, a, um, a team that just focuses on like traditional hospitality um, and kind of making sure that they have their way on the platform as well. So like the diversity of hosts, people on the platform, like their needs is like so broad that I think that's what makes it really interesting. Mm. Um, experientially, you know, for our guests, we want them be spending as little time as possible on the app. They want, we want like them having kind of the offline experience. Um, for hosts, I mean, they might be launching our app once five times or like 20 times a day, right? Mm. Uh, depending on the number of guests, like inquiries, whatever's happening. So like even like the, the, the product use case is different. Um, the range of personas is really different. And it's for me going to like research studies and just kind of, you know, sitting in on um, focus groups and like one-on-one -on -one testings and just like hearing people be so much in love with the platform mm -hmm. uh, with how it changed their lives. Um, how many people they hosted from like all across the globe and there's there's this one story that I, I mean, I tell it often because I really love it as a story um, where, you know, there was like a small village um, in Japan and there was a host there that wanted to like put their um, spare room on the platform. And she was like kind of casually talking in the community and like seeing if this resonates and like no one was really supporting, you know, in the, this like small village, you know, rural Japan. Yeah. Um, people didn't really like get it. It's like, and they almost 
look at her as you know being weird is like who's going to come to our small village like no one's interested in that like and what happened she actually you know believed in this hypothesis so much that she put it on Airbnb people started showing up but then the butterfly effect happened because she started engaging the entire community because like this one person started like um giving out hikes you know experiences yeah. right yeah. um Someone else was like really good in English because she wasn't. And so it was like the translator. A, a third person was like cooking something for these guests so that like something local and traditional like reads them when they come. And all of a sudden you have this and it's on a small scale, but like that's that's what makes us all excited. Like on a small scale, mm. you change an entire community. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just like, you know, being exposed to those kind of really life stories is what you know gets me really excited to get get in the office every day oh awesome man uh, look thank you so much tin it, it's been thank amazing you, just to understand a bit more about what you do within um the 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 whole um system of of design um and what you're doing there where where can people find more about what you're doing and and where you are online uh i think like airbnb.design is like the first location that I would like just nudge you to kind of keep an eye on. Yeah. Um, Airbnb at Airbnb design is on Twitter and Instagram both. Um, and that's like a good way to just see whatever's happening across um, the entire design team because I'm just like, I'm trying to do a lot, but there's like so many of other smart, talented people. Um, and like for questions, I'm usually really happy to engage in conversation, as you know, on Twitter. Yeah. So on Twitter, I'm at, at uh, Tim Kadoik, uh, T-I-N-K-D-O-I-C. And um, yeah, and just like, especially if you're like a young designer and like trying to find your way voice. Um, back in Croatia, I used to um, teach at the School of Design for like five years. So that's kind of a hidden hidden i don't know if it's hidden a hidden passion of mine yeah. um so really kind of helping people um create great products and how kind of have great impact uh through product design awesome. which is what we do yeah awesome thank you so much Let, let's try a virtual high five if we can <laughs> <laughs> cheers buddy cheers Ross. thank, thank you. you so much I love doing these interviews. I just let them talk and just prompt them now and then, but it's great to get some insight into how a amazing product uh, studio like Airbnb is doing. What I learned particularly was how Airbnb is a like a town with many kind of startups collaborating together and not competing. I learned about how he works as a design lead and the, the kinds of tasks and operations that he does. Uh, but also I learned about how his remit doesn't just deal with the online experience but also the offline experience of of hosts dealing with uh, putting their house or room on Airbnb and what that looks like. So please subscribe to make sure you get the next lot of etch epic goodness. See you next time.